one thing that's safe to say about the Fish Lake National Forest, the wildlife is never far away. Because now I've got a bull elk headed this way. Fish Lake National Forest is not an area that's known for backpacking, but maybe it should be. Today is June 26th, 2018, and I'm up above Fish Lake in Pelican Canyon, about halfway to the junction that will eventually connect me to the Fish Lake High Top Trail. It's mainly recognized as an equestrian area, so not as many backpackers or hikers using these trails. For this trip, I'm also documenting what may or may not be needed for the Forest Service trail work crew. Last week, I got to do some trail work with the local Fremont Ranger District out of Loa. Creston, who's in charge of the trail crew, encouraged me to document any sort of uh, work that might need to be done, and uh, who knows, perhaps I'll be able to save them some time by discovering that the trails are in great shape over Fish Lake High Top. Last time I did an overnight trip in Fish Lake, it was mid-May and freezing overnight, every night. And it's not that way on this trip. There's definitely some mosquitoes evident. Not as bad as I've seen elsewhere back east and other places. I'm really glad that I brought my bug net. Today I'm looking to get up above 11,000 feet, maybe as high as 11,600 feet on my way to Lost Creek Reservoir tonight before coming back towards the Forest Service Road. And overall the loop will be 20 something miles and I'm planning for as many as three nights, so we'll see how I go. Above the junction following the Right Fork Trail towards the High Top Trail is where the trail does get a little more faint, but if you look for the cairn, and a path that doesn't appear to be very well used, you should be able to find your way. There's also a small little pond over there that could make for a nice spot to water your horses or your humans. I'm up on Fish Lake High Top now, really close to the Sevier County High Point at 11,600 or so. I believe that to be the high point right over there as I'm coming up on the junction with the Jeep road that apparently dead ends close to Tasha Springs. Beautiful spread of these little yellow wildflowers and the pink clovers and also of the slightly lower high point we see over there. The mountain over there is some 30 feet shorter than the one that's close by here. So after I top off on water at Tasha Springs, it's some seven or eight miles, something like that, to get myself along the high top trail to the Lost Creek Trail. I'll be surprised if I see anyone else but we'll see what happens.
thanks to some well-placed cairns, the trail is actually pretty easy to follow. So thanks to the Fremont Ranger District and the crew there that works on the trails. Continues to be some very pleasant high country meadow here. Rather rocky soil, but enjoyable nonetheless. Up here above 11,000 feet. From the second high point along the Fish Lake High Top Trail here, now get a view looking west towards Kusharam Reservoir down there. And a wide panorama of everything else north of the reservoir in the direction of Salina, Utah, and then looking north along the ridge amidst various wildflowers blooming here. Really a beautiful day to be out. Just saw a deer as I'm getting back into the woods here, and quite a few blowdowns as well, and some obstacles that will be difficult for horses to duck under and perhaps go around. Beautiful section of the trail though. Even if the mosquitoes are becoming a little more evident, must mean I'm getting close to some water somewhere. Usually the wildlife sees me first, but sometimes I see the wildlife first. Finally within view of the trailhead here. If you're starting from that trailhead, going up to the high top trail, it's a little vague. Happy to see it looks like a pretty good water source here as well. And even a campsite. But once I got close to the creek, there's a big old beaver or something. It loved its home in the rocks, so I'm wondering if it might be a marmot instead. Not unlike my first overnight trip around Fish Lake, nice variety of wildlife. Made it up to the north high top trailhead and was pleased to learn there's actually an old path here, mostly a game trail from what I can tell that connects that spot to where I'm trying to get to, which is Neil's Flat. I can see from here that there's an old faded Jeep trail. And glad that I don't have to walk along the more established Jeep road that's noted on all the maps. Glad I could fill up the Camelback with the spring I saw back there. And we'll see how I go. Hopefully find a nice campsite down here in Neil's Flat. Definitely clear that this particular campsite was occupied by some livestock as well as some deer before I came here. Now there's a bunch of them silhouetting the ridge line in the fading light. 
And the almost full moon. I think it'll actually be full tomorrow. But a real beautiful camp spot here. Even if it is a little bit windy, I could see why other animals would want to hang out here too. Definitely something about this spot that draws in the animals. Because now I've got a bull elk headed this way. With what looks like a cow right behind him. He's not really that happy to see me. And neither is the cow. Wow. Today's June 27th, 2018. I ended up making my way to the High Top Trail yesterday and touched a couple of the high points there. Eventually making my way to Daniels Pass and then taking a bit of a shortcut trail down to the Neal Flat Trail, which was pretty vague but marked well enough with a few trail markers. Certainly it helps to have GPS through this section found this campsite last night that had some pretty extraordinary wildlife sightings that appeared to be a elk herd hanging out in the area. Today I'm going to follow the trail down towards the Forest Service Road 640 on my way to the Johnson Valley Reservoir and see how far I get on my way back to Fish Lake where I started. The trail's a bit vague and there may be a water hazard for me to cross, but we'll see how I go and hopefully keep the road walking to a minimum. Just about to pack up camp and walk off. And at the other side of the meadow, a couple more elk. Still deciding if they want to come this way. Because as I learned last night, this meadow's very popular for the local wildlife here. I just slathered on a whole bunch of this coconut scented sunscreen, so with their sense of smell, they could maybe catch a whiff of that, even from this distance. Well, while they're thinking about it, I'm going to pack up and uh, hit the trail. Or the route, as the case may be. The trail is still barely evident. The rock cairns have become less frequent. This is clearly a trail that has not seen maintenance for some time. The Avenza GPS maps is really coming in handy. So special thanks to Creston for hooking me up with the uh, Fish Lake National Forest Avenza map. The Avenza app is free to download, but some of the maps might cost a few extra bucks. Looks like I disrupted some elk here. I'm finding it tough to walk through this area without disrupting some wildlife. Last night I it felt like I was almost invading their living room, seeing as how the big game imprints were on in the grass and underneath the trees as well, where I pitched my tent last night. But I'm gone now, so they can have it back. Up above here, I'm back in a meadow that, at least at one time, was used for cattle grazing, and much easier tread than what I was having to bushwhack through earlier. Shortly after that meadow where I was camping, I definitely lost the trail, but I'm glad to be back on it now. Had to cross over some rocky talus stuff, which I don't believe you'll have to do if you can follow the trail proper. Hey buddies, taking a drink out of the cattle pool there? One thing that's safe to say about the Fish Lake National Forest, the wildlife is never far away.
getting close to the Seven Mile Creek Road, also known as Forest Road 640. And I'm also enjoying the scenery here along a tributary to that Seven Mile Creek. Also enjoying the Seven Mile Cirque up there, those Seven Mile Cliffs, with various abundant wildflowers. Turns out this Neil's Flat Trail is really more of a route. There are some game trails that overlap with the route that's noted on the map. So game does a decent job of keeping those trails well defined. I'm finally here at a cattle gate. And as a general rule, you just always want to put the cattle gate back how you found it. In this case, it's closed. Seeing as how the cross-country route finding has sort of become the theme of the last half of this trip, I decided to go ahead and stay on the uphill side of Seven Mile Creek and avoid having to walk along the Forest Service Road 640 along the pavement there. I do know that there is a gravel road that sort of spurs off of 640. So that's my plan is to just sort of choose my own adventure through these pastures that have various types of uh, fencing around it. Usually it's easy enough to find a sort of gate so I don't need to be climbing over the barbed wire, but we'll see how I go. Been enjoying a trail that's not actually on any of the maps, but it's definitely known about. There's a couple of broken Forest Service trail signs and a relatively new looking sign. that I'll be able to at least check out the Johnson Valley Reservoir, which is actually where the pelicans have been hanging out lately. So hopefully we'll catch a glimpse of some shorebirds here at Johnson Valley Reservoir. Just crossed the road onto the Reflection Spring Trail, which essentially links the Johnson Valley Reservoir with Fish Lake. And sure enough, right after I spotted those other more common birds, a pelican arrived on the scene. Just a solo pelican for the time being. Reflection Spring, which the trail is named, as well as a horseback equestrian going on there, a dog and two horses. Today's June 28th, 2018. 
I'm taking in the sunrise on the shores of the Johnson Valley Reservoir here. Fish Lake National Forest is not an area that's known for backpacking, but maybe it should be. Given the high concentration and variety of wilderness here, the ability to escape the summer heat with various trails above 10,000 feet, and tread that's pretty easy to walk on most of the time, even through the cross-country sections. Today I'll be finishing up the Reflection Springs Trail down to the Lake Creek Trailhead, and then I'll follow the Lakeshore Trail up and over the Pelican Canyon viewpoint, and then on to Bowery Haven Resort. Including side trips, I will have covered about 30 miles over the three and a half day trip. You don't have to have a cow. I'm really glad that I pulled water from the Reflection Spring. I was about to pull it from the Johnson Valley Reservoir. Seeing how many cows are upstream. Glad they've got a spring feeding Johnson Valley Reservoir also. Looks like the trail goes around this whole marshy area on its way to the Lake Creek Trailhead off in the distance there where there's that porta potty and a parking lot That's all for now. See you next time. On the next Backpacker Diaries. I'm gonna celebrate my independence by continuing along the Great Western Trail with a stop at Meeks Lake and then hopefully make it over to Choke Cherry Point, which apparently has a spectacular view I'm looking east over Capitol Reef and onto the Henry Mountains. Maybe I'd find